She's making history on the state's highest court. Patricia Lee will soon sit on the bench of the Nevada Supreme Court as the state's first black woman and first Asian American in this role. New at 6, News 3's Maria Thompson spoke with the newest justice, learning her approach to the law and shares how civil rights icon Rosa Parks played a big role in Lee's path to the courtroom. Justice Select Patricia Lee soon joining the ranks of the Supremes. Governor Steve Sisolak appointed her to the state Supreme Court just a few weeks ago. I spent some time with Lee hearing all about her journey to the bench. We came here when I was like three or four. Um, I was born in Jeonju, South Korea. Patricia Lee, daughter of a Korean mom and an American dad who was stationed overseas. They moved to the U.S. and ended up in Central California. For as long as I can remember. I remember living on the base a little bit, but mostly in Lompoc, California. A graduate from University of Southern California. I'm very proud of my Trojans. But it's the year after graduation that changed the course of her career. A conversation with civil rights icon Rosa Parks. So one day we're sitting there and she says, um, you know, I didn't talk to her a lot because she always had you know, people around her and I was kind of, you know, I was so overwhelmed by her, like I didn't want to bother her. But one day we were sitting there and she just goes, so this is what you're going to do for the rest of your life? You're just going to work at this museum? This is it? <laughs> and I go, and I said, well, I was thinking about going to law school. And she goes, baby, if you want to go to law school, you go to law school. Can we just emphasize that again? Rosa Parks. <laughs> yes, Rosa yes. Rosa Parks. The Rosa Parks. Rosa Parks. Yes, because when Rosa Parks tells you to go to law school, you go to law, you school. Go to law school. That's just, that's the end of the discussion. So that's just what Lee did. Her first job out of law school brought her to Southern Nevada as an attorney for Hutchison and Stephan. 20 years later, she made Las Vegas home. While she and her husband raised two teenagers, Lee works as a partner at the firm doing commercial litigation, trademarks, family law. But my standout cases have all been my pro bono cases. One of her pro bono cases changed the law, and Lee's efforts on pro bono projects recognized at a national level. You shouldn't be excluded from having access to justice just because you can't afford it. It should be justice for all. Justice, her life's mission, now her new title. As we looked up at her new seat, I asked about her judicial philosophy. Being fair and impartial, ruling without fear or favor, uh, making sure that I'm looking at just the issue before me. Building trust in the court, instilling confidence in the community, and diversifying the bench. There's somebody up there who may have the same background as me, who, may, who looks like me. Um, and so I think representation matters. Which brings us to Lee's life-changing phone call with Governor Steve Sisolak. I was picking my daughter up from uh, wrestling. Phone rings were in the car and you know you have this, she, so she can hear everything that's happening and hello Patricia Lee this is Governor Sisolak and it was so funny because we were um, so she's looking at me and I'm looking at her and, you know I'm just like <laughs> you got the appointment. <laughs> so A special moment shared with loved ones and in this moment before Lee officially takes her seat at the bench, she's reminded of the people that helped pave her way. When I knew I had the support of my partners, I knew I had the support of my husband and my family, um, and then that was all I needed. Everything else just, just fell into place. <laughs> Lee will be sworn in December 21st, and she says it's full steam ahead into the new year. Today, Governor Sisolak says that he hopes Nevadans will start a necessary conversation about the future of the death penalty in our state. News 3's Brett Forrest joins us now live outside of the Nevada Supreme Court chambers in Las Vegas. And Brett, this comes after a judge shot down his proposal to commute sentences of death row into life without parole. Yeah, LaToya, that's right. Good evening. So this is a story we have been following closely for you here on News 3. A district court judge, as you mentioned, ruling against Governor Sisolak's proposal, saying that it just did not give victims of crime from those on death row enough notice that this is going to be on the agenda today. So Governor Sisolak, right before the Board of Pardons meeting started, accepted defeat on his proposal, but used it as an opportunity to talk about how he thinks capital punishment is, quote, fundamentally broken. I have long maintained that capital punishment should be sought and used less often. Capital punishment has many flaws, including long-standing systemic problems with the criminal justice system and the significant cost related to carrying out an execution. 
Now, Sislak also said the death penalty gives a, quote, false promise of justice to victims while dragging them through decades of legal battles. He read these prepared remarks just before the Board of Pardons meeting began, acknowledging this is his final month as governor, and he's grateful to start a conversation. His proposal would have commuted the sentences of all 57 people on death row here in Nevada. And despite the judge's ruling, many advocates still showing up to today's meeting to voice their support of abolishing the death penalty. The reality is that most of these cases are at least two decades old. The reality is that we do not have the logistics to move forward with an execution. We do not have the drugs or the protocol clarified in the courts right now. And I hope that we can see how there is something supremely broken in our system where maybe we should allocate resources to helping the people that are left with a broken family. Now, I do want to note that there were also some people who did speak uh, in support of the death penalty. And as for the future of this issue, groups like the ACLU of Nevada tell me that they will continue the fight to try and abolish the death penalty. But uh, with Governor-elect Joe Lombardo taking office in just a few weeks, those hopes could be dimming because he has indicated that he himself does support capital punishment. Crisis in the Classroom investigative reporter Tiffany Lane has details on the incident and how this raises concerns about safety in our schools once again. Yeah, LaToya, the incident on Friday at Legacy High School, a school where we've had multiple incidents over the last year. I spoke with Vicki Cridell, president of the National Education Association of Southern Nevada, and she says something needs to be done to make sure safety is a priority. I think we need to be proactive, not reactive. Like. We've already, we already know that what can happen. Vicki Cridell says there have been changes in student behavior over the last year, with other teachers telling her safety is not improving in our Clark County schools. The word is that safety is not better. Students are running the schools. Um, teachers are being disrespected on a daily basis, and the incidents are being minimized. A recent incident she's referencing Friday at Legacy High School. Three minors have been arrested after two teachers were injured while trying to break up a fight at Legacy High School. Cridell emphasizing this is not the only violent incident at the high school over the last few months. In April, three students not associated with the high school reportedly came onto campus to confront some students at Legacy. They were taken into custody. And they had another incident too. They had an incident where a parent came into the school and cornered a teacher in a classroom. Earlier this year, after incidents at multiple schools, CCSD announced single point of entries at schools, improving camera systems and a device where staff members would wear something similar to a lanyard around their necks that could alert dispatch and school staff during emergencies. Some schools have rolled out the measures, others are still in the process. Cridell says those steps are not enough. So what we recommended before was that every school have a comprehensive safety committee that has employees of that site. Um, we know our site. We know where the security weaknesses are. And we could make suggestions that may not cost a lot of money that could improve safety. She says these steps need to be put in place immediately, concerned that violence in local schools will only get worse over the next few months. My concern is behaviors tend to escalate in general as we get closer to the end of the school year. Um, right before winter break is another time when we see it, and we did. Now, as far as the incident at Legacy goes, CCSD says it cannot discuss individual student matters, but added that it will pursue all legal actions against anyone who commits violence on our school campuses. The district says it continues to focus on strategies like the single points of entry and instant alert systems. Now, send me your tips on issues impacting our schools, including safety, whether you're a student, a parent, employee, or a concerned community member. You can scan that QR code on your screen or email schooltips at news3lv.com. You can also call the number 702-805-0489. Hi, everybody. I'm Reed Cowan from News 3 Las Vegas. We want to thank you for checking out our YouTube channel. Remember, you can always see more of our videos by clicking on the video links. And also don't forget to click that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any of our YouTube updates. Thanks for watching.